welcome to Let's Talk Roblox, the series where I will be interviewing Roblox developers on certain topics. Today I'm joined with the one and only Gnome Code. Gnome Code and I will be talking about the impact of AI and Roblox Studio game development. Let's dive right in. So how and when did you start developing in Roblox Studio? Well, I joined Roblox all the way back in 2011. So I was just a kid at the time. I uh, didn't really know what I was doing. I was just kind of messing about playing a few games. But I think the first few games I tended to play were the creative kind. So I'd play those sort of build games. And a lot of the time they sort of limit you to one area, like you just have a base plate or something. Always pretty limiting. And then I discovered about the build mode. This is years ago. It's not even a thing anymore in studio. When did you join Roblox? I joined Roblox originally back in 2014, just playing and messing with the games, but I never really got into Roblox Studio until fairly recently, I think like 2022 or so. So I'm still pretty new on the Roblox Studio side of things. Did build mode exist when you joined? Honestly, when I joined, I wasn't really paying attention to any of the creative aspects of Roblox Studio, such as well, Roblox Studio and build mode if it was a thing at the time, so I honestly couldn't tell you if it was a thing. Well, it was like you were able to edit your own place, but without Studio, so they just gave you your build tools. You could add uh, pre-made parts and things like that, but of course you weren't able to add anything custom. I remember I probably loaded up Studio for the first time. I had two options, build mode, which is what I'd always done, and then edit mode. So I clicked that and it opened up this this brand new window. I had no idea what any of it did, but it looked interesting. Uh, I looked into that and many years on, uh, I actually know my way about the place now. I tell you what, it's a lot more user friendly than it used to be several years ago as well. I think uh, Roblox have done some big improvements there. When I first uh, had it years ago, it wasn't even obvious how to add in a part or anything. Now, you know, they've got nice big buttons. I think the UI has come a long way. Why did you choose Roblox Studio versus other game engines such as Unity, Unreal Engine, all the other ones, all that stuff? Yeah, that's a good question. I think especially Roblox seems to get a lot of scrutiny now. We've, a lot of people probably seen that hit piece on the, the pe by people play games. For me, the reason I'm on Roblox is simply because that's what I was used to and it's what I spent a lot of time learning about. But I really do think even if you were completely new to Roblox, it makes a lot of sense to make games on Roblox Studio because it's where the players are. I don't know where else you can create a game and straight away have your servers set up and people joining your game. You can't really get that if you're just launching as a, a brand new indie developer on something like Steam. Yeah, Roblox is definitely a great place to start for that. I feel like it's also useful how its skills are transferable as the LUAU language is also fairly similar to other programming languages such as Python and even JavaScript, which are once again similar to C++, which is the coding language that Unreal Engine uses. I feel like it's a great opportunity for people to learn these coding things and actually get into coding. So where or how did you learn to code when you first started? Well, I think it's one thing to, to make things, to put it simply. Like I was saying about wanting to uh, experiment more with what I was able to create in my own place. I remember watching a Stickmaster Luke, if anyone remembers that name. He was a former, well, I think he still is. He still works at Roblox. He had some tutorials which got me started. And it was just doing very basic things like changing colors. But when you're starting out, little things like that, they feel pretty, uh, pretty powerful in a way, doing things through code. Even just the feel of knowing that you're learning and that you're actually doing something, that you're actually able to do something, I feel like that's just really special when you're first starting out. And just one more question here. What's something you enjoy outside of Roblox Studio and coding? Uh, I like to get out, get outside. Uh, I do a lot of hiking, camping, that kind of thing. Uh, I know it's a bit of a meme, the touch grass thing at the moment, but it's definitely true. I see a lot of Roblox developers looking very uh, white and, and pasty faced. I think the guys need to get outside a bit more. It's definitely good for you. Yeah, I've only gone camping once before, but it was definitely one of the best times I've ever had. It was really fun just to be outdoors. And I can definitely agree with you that it is good to take a break every once in a while. Alright, so now I'm going to bring you into our main topic of our conversation here. How do you feel AI technology can enhance the Roblox Studio game development process? 
Well, I think it's still early days, really. I mean, I've just experimented with things like ChatGPT, for example. You can give it a prompt and it can it can write you some code. Now, you can't just say, hey, write me a Roblox game. We're not really at that stage yet. Maybe we will be possibly in a few years. To be honest, I kind of hope it doesn't get to that stage anytime soon because that would really take away a lot of the jobs of developers such as scripters, programmers, all that stuff. What I found it's really useful for is creative prompts. I've had some good fun over the last few days. You give it a few silly things and ask it to write you a, a little movie script involving a teddy bear or some random thing you've come up with and uh, it can do it. So it can be really good for creative avenues and I'd like to see developers trying to use that a bit more to uh, help them in their creative processes. Yeah, the creative aspect of Roblox Studio, it's definitely kind of hard to come up with ideas sometime. And even if you do have a good idea, it's kind of hard to build off that idea at times. And sometimes when you feel like you're stuck and you can't work on your game anymore. It definitely helps to have something like an AI to help you generate ideas for that game. So I feel like that is definitely a very useful thing. To now, I'm not saying you shouldn't go ahead and use your own creativity and imagination. It's just if you are stuck or if you really need an idea, Go ahead and feel free to use AI. Do you think AI is going to take the place of developers such as yourself in the future? Possibly. I think it's something to be aware of. I mean, even with the code that it generates at the moment, it's normally, well, I assume how it works is it's relying on the resources that are out there, like tutorials and so on. And so it's pretty good at generating like a tutorial sample, but whether it's actually going to be able to develop programs which would require more of an inbuilt understanding of the code rather than just mimicking what it sees. I think we've probably got quite a way to go on that, but you know, none of us have got crystal balls. True, but AI do definitely has the ability to learn and explore more things, so I can definitely see it learning a lot more about Roblox Studio as a whole and maybe leaning off of using other people's code and tutorials for that. What do you think are some of the drawbacks or limitations of AI in Roblox Studio? Well, the main drawback probably is you still got to be able to read and understand the code. Like I say, maybe one day you'll be able to say to the AI, hey, make me an entire game. Uh, but that's not going to be for a long time yet. And so if you're getting code snippets, like I'm sure you found with your own YouTube channel, uh, if people just blindly follow the tutorial, even though all the code's there, uh, people make mistakes. And if you don't understand how all the pieces fit together, you're still going to run into a lot of issues. For now, at least, uh, programmers were safe. So now, would you suggest using AI for a complete beginner in Roblox Studio? No, definitely not. As I'm saying, you've got to uh, be able to understand it. And when you're a beginner, I think reading code is actually really hard to do it's much easier to write code. That's how I always found it, at least. So you can understand every piece of the logic as you're writing it. Another thing that really helps with reading code is as you're writing it, make sure you leave comments about like what that code does, how this code works, or just like things to remind you what this is here for. That really helps while learning because it can help you refresh your brain on what that specific code does. Where do you see AI in the future of Roblox Studio game development? Hmm, well something we could already have now, say you could have ChatGPT chat up and you could say, oh, given, make a game mechanic for an RPG that's set in medieval England and it involves castles and then maybe it would give you five different prompts. I think that could really help with people at the design process. Yeah, once again, the creative aspect of things is absolutely huge with Roblox Studio. I mean, I've had times when I couldn't even come up with a decent YouTube video and I had to use ChatGPT. It's great for coming up with ideas. I will definitely give it that. And it can definitely help with you if you're on the design side of things, trying to design a game, if you're trying to think of ideas of a game, if you're trying to think of ideas for like a really unique custom map that you're going to build or something unique that you want to script, ChatGPT is definitely the way to go for that. Otherwise, you can always stick to your own imagination and creativity.
So wrapping up with these questions, are there any questions you wanted to add? Uh, I should have prepared for this one, shouldn't I? To be honest, it's the, it's the obvious question. Any more questions? Well, I'm going to be following the series closely for sure. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing if you interview any more devs. Have you got any uh, future people you've got lined up? I've got a few more developers lined up that I want to ask and invite to the show and all that. So we'll see how it goes. Thank you so much for being here. I thank you for your time and just your insights on this. The main reason why I'm trying to make this series to help beginners learn how to code and script for themselves and not by just always looking in the toolbox for things to learn, but also learning how actual like game developers learn to code in the first place. Because everybody starts somewhere, and I feel like if these really good game developers can just tell people how they started out first, it can really help these beginners learn to kind of walk in their footsteps and not exactly copy them, but really just learn the best way they can. You know, that's a big thing I've tried to do uh, on my own channel, and well, as you're doing on your channel, right? And I think a lot of people, they can get bogged down. Uh, we could call it tutorial hell, where you're just watching tutorials and they're failing to gain a full understanding. I think you need to do a certain amount of just trial and error and gain and build up that experience over time. I mean, time is the biggest thing, but when you put time into it, like I say, I've been on Roblox since 2011. I can't say when I exactly started learning Studio, but certainly for the last three, four years, um, I've been using Studio every day. That really compounds your knowledge massively over time. And it's definitely not just time that helps with that. It's also how much effort you put into it, because you could put in a month or two building a game for yourself or maybe even a friend or whatever you're making the game for and to be honest the game can be absolutely awful you could put no effort into it and the game would not be fun at all but if you actually put effort and your time into the game not only will you learn more you'll have more respect for the game that you made and you'll also just have a lot more fun making it as you'll be able to see the results of where you came from to where you are now building this game all right, thank you for your time. And uh, thank you for having me. Cheers. Well, hey guys, I think that's going to finish this interview for today. I hope you guys learned a lot from this. I just want to thank Gnome Code for joining me today. Make sure you go subscribe to the both of us.